are you, Trey? Rich, always good to talk to you. Can't, can't wait to straighten out these two knuckleheads. I, look, you're not the <laughs> first person to call on the show like that. Um, <laughs> let's get it on. Yeah, let's do it. No, before, when was the last time you did Sports Center? Just a straight up Sports Center. I'm going to have to say three to four years no ago. No way. Yeah. Well, you know, NFL Live's year round. And then, uh, you know, I, I did the I U.S. Know. Open and the British Open golf for six years in the summer. Um, right. Going to be part of Wimbledon this summer. Um, you know, so uh, as, as you well know, Rich, at your job, the yes. NFL tends to be the largest egg in the basket. Oh, it and, does. Uh, it does. But, I mean, so, you know, I, I do two shows sometimes in a day. I mean, you know, yeah. I know you can handle that, Trey. I mean, oh, can. I can. I, I just would prefer not to. Now, do they, do, they, do they give you a headshot for NFL Live, too, to let you know, let, uh, let, let you know who's hosting? Because I can't believe that. I was sitting here with Dan the other day when DP was on Friday, and we were looking over before he was on. And I think we saw the headshots of like John Anderson and Steve Levy saying that they were doing the late night Sports Center or the later sport. We that well, that, that we never had headshots. We never no, did that. No, no, it's, it's, it's a brand new thing we're trying here. <laughs> <laughs> now, would it be a spoiler to tweet out during the show? Who's doing the le the next show or something like that, Trey? Would you think that? Would that be a no, spoiler? No, I don't think that would be a spoiler at all. I, I think that that would entice the viewer to stick around and see what's going on. Mm, okay, very good. Let's get into it here, because you know you were a tweeting fiend during Game of Thrones every single Sunday. Hodor, right? baby. Hodor. Now, I know that. You were tweeting that out during the show. Do you not? At the end of the show, yeah. Okay, so now, do you not know? I mean, you know what you're doing. You, you're, you're tweeting out dire wolves are in danger, hashtag only two left. Yep. You know, you went Hodor with full caps right after, I guess. So it, would that be what, at like 9.53? About 9, about 9.56, 9.57, something like that, East Coast time. So what's your philosophy here, Trey? Uh, here's my philosophy. Well, first of all, let me, let me, let's get the Chris's. I want to get their philosophy on something first. Okay. What is their philosophy of what Twitter is? Guys? It's a news source. Uh, exactly. Uh, would you call it an interactive microblog site? Sure, but in real on. in real time. But not in real time. Yes not everyone knows. can follow along in real time, Trey, and especially on the same night that there's an NBA uh, conference finals game going on, and us on the West Coast, it's six o'clock. It's evening. Also, it's early. Trey, you know how immensely popular you are in the UK. With, with NFL fans, they don't get to watch Game of Thrones until Monday evening over there. How about that, Trey? You didn't think hey. law—you didn't think law would be standing up for the good people yeah, of I, London I, I right all now. All the guys who's going to wave the Union Jack. I didn't think it was going to be uh, law in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> Look, here's the deal: if you don't want to know, don't check Twitter. It's pretty simple. But there was an NBA basketball playoff game going on, and there are people I like that cover the sport that I want to see some of their reactions. Second screen to experience. See, you just nailed it. You just nailed it. Something's going on on Twitter, uh, going on that's on TV, and I want to get their reactions. But mm -hmm. sports you is not. You have nailed it. You've nailed it. Thank you for making my point for me. Okay, so, so what is your point then, Trey? If you don't want to know, get off Twitter. It's true. Or unfollow me. I'm good with it. I love you guys. You can follow me back after after a 60 minute break. But now you know Aaron Rodgers, M MVP, <laughs> MVP, MVP of the league that we we cover and love. Uh, he himself has agreed because he was used to tweet stuff out to his followers. He has agreed to a 24 hour spoiler alert rule. Trey. Yeah, I, I don't, uh, I don't, I don't see that as as, uh, as something that I would adhere to in any way, shape, or form. What were your <laughs> at mentions like yeah. after you tweeted some of that stuff? Yeah. What, what did your fans say to you? Did they like it, or did you get some uh, negativity thrown your way? Well, I, I need to be honest about something. I, I rarely check my mentions. Oh, Trey. I tweet, tw I tweet, I treat Twitter differently. I think that most people do. Okay. My my opinion is, if you want to follow me, that's great. Here's what I'm talking about. But I'm not sure I'm interested in everything you have to say because if I would, I'd be following you. Hmm. Can I flip? By this? the way, hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. That's that sounded very Baylesian, Trey. Oh, see, oh, see, now that's not nice. Oh, no. <laughs> you know what I mean? All I'm saying, all I'm saying is, is, is that I follow the people who I'm interested in hearing from, and occasionally I'll check. But I, I really, I, I can promise you, I'm not one of these people who goes. Ooh, I just put this out there. Let me see what everyone's saying about it. Mm. Just, that's not the way I operate. So then what is your reason for tweeting out about Game of Thrones? Just because you, you're, you're fired up or like what? Like why? why does anybody tweet about anything? Because you want to share. You want to share. There you go. But if it's a shared experience and not everyone can share the experience in real time, why not have some respect for those people? 
What what people am I not respecting, Chris? The people who are, don't get a chance to watch at that time. Again, it's very simple. All you have to do is not be on Twitter. It's very simple. This seems like more of a you problem than a me it's, problem. It's not a me problem. You're I'm you're looking out for everyone else. I, really? That's I, why you're doing this? I'm off on you're, you're, Sunday you're, nights. You're the, you're the selfless soul carrying the banner of the flayed man in this, in this situation. <laughs> hey, free Brady and free Hodor, Trey. That's <laughs> well, uh, listen, if you could free Hodor, then we'd really have a story. Uh, wait a minute. Are you calling Roger Goodell a white walker by saying that, Brockman? I, I mean, would essentially you just say be calling him a white walker, Did you yes. just say that about... Trey, it's night two of the draft in Chicago. You're there on the set, and the most emotional pick of the entire draft is coming up, Jalen Smith at number three from the Cowboys. And the insiders that do tweet out the pick in advance and ruin your broadcast and Rich's broadcast. You have a problem with that, right? Uh, I, I don't, actually, because if that's, if that's the way it. they want to do it, I'm not holding them in, in any standard that I would not want myself to be held to. So, I mean, I think we all know we have an agreement in place with uh, the NFL to not tweet out picks ahead of time. But that's us, and that's NFL Network. What other people do, I can't control that. I'm not going to worry about controlling that. So it sounds like that old joke, Trey, right? That old joke where somebody goes to the doctor and say, Doc, it, it hurts when I move my arm like this. And then the doctor says, so don't move your arm like this. There you go. You know, Doc, it hurts me when I look at Trey Wingo's Twitter feed, and he says Hodor at 9.56 at night. And I haven't seen it yet, and I know Hodor. And that's the thing, too, as well. How do you, Brockman, I'm going to stand up for you, Trey. Thank you, brother. You're welcome, sir. How do you, like, you don't know Hodor, what that's, what does that mean? It just says Hodor. What does that mean? Hodor. Do you know that, does that mean? Yes. That, what does yes, it mean? Yes, because Hodor is a very minor character on the show. Too so cool. when you tweet out something about Hodor, you know that there's an interesting and very detailed and important plot point surrounding ah, him. See, again, you proved my point. What I've just done with that tweet, I've piqued your interest. I've made you more interested in the show. Again, I really appreciate you. I don't know why I'm here. You're doing all, of, all the right things for me. You're doing great. Hey, do you want to hear how, uh, how Brockman referred to one of uh, uh, Julio Urias's pitches? You know, because the 19-year-old's been called up by the Dodgers. Yeah. Uh, here, here, this, this, was, this was Brockman uh, delivering the news uh, about an hour ago at this time. Got a 97-year-old fastball. He has a 97-year-old fastball. <laughs> Well, you know, if, if you if you still have a fastball at 97, I think that's tweet worthy. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. oh. And boom goes the dynamite. <laughs> aye, aye, aye. Hey Trey, if you if you could choose which Hasselbreck brother you could do a show with, you know you've got a choice now, right? You yeah. got a choice now, Matthew or Timothy. You know they like being called by their full their full names. Or oh, absolutely, I, I'm pulling for the full Hasselback experience. How it, you know? I'm going to call it a, a you know. With all due respect to you, my friend, a hair sandwich. I got Hasselback on one side, mm -hmm. another Hasselback on the other side, and a little hair in the middle. That's right. Okay. <laughs> Wait till you meet Nathaniel, the youngest brother. Oh, I've met him. Uh, he's, he's, been up, he's been up there a few times. He's the saucy one. He is that one. He is. Hey, Trey, before I let you go, to n n not to bring us down here, but I know you're yeah. a Baylor guy. Yeah. So I do have to ask you your thoughts sure. on, uh, on the news today that Art Bryles is out or he's about to be out or he's suspended with the intent to be out and Ken Starr is still somewhere around the, uh, the organization as the chancellor and a law school professor with what's gone on on that campus, Trey. It's a very sad day and uh, on, for a lot of reasons it's been a sad situation for you know, a couple of years now. And you know, what's really amazing to me, Rich, is that in the last 15 or 16 years, two of the biggest scandals in all of college sports have happened at my alma mater. Uh, Dave Bliss with the basketball program, I believe, in 2000 or 2001, and then what's uh, happened with Art. Um, I, I, I do on some level respect the Board of Regents for standing up for what they believe to be the right thing to do, and I think taking care of your students and fully uh, going after any allegations like these that have been made is the right thing to do. Uh, and on that note, I'm, I'm happy that they've decided that football isn't going to define what Baylor University should be about. But on the other hand, I'm, I'm terrified to read this Phillips report uh, because from everything that I've been hearing, it's pretty damning on what happened and how some people at the school went out of their way to either slow down or flat out discourage people from reporting some of these allegations and incidents. And that's just unacceptable in any way, shape or form. Yeah. And, and what did you go to? Are you you're, are you from Texas? My whole family's from Texas. I was born in New York and grew up in Greenwich, right outside the city. But uh, my mom and dad went to Baylor. My sister went to Baylor. My aunts and uncles, most of them went to Baylor. Most of my cousins went to Baylor. Um, so, you know, that was a that was a shared familial experience uh, for a lot of us. And uh, you know, it was great to see. It, it's been great to see 
the athletic department come back and do the things that they've done, not only in football, but the basketball program with Scott, too, and the women's basketball program with Kim Mulkey. It's all been great. Mm -hmm. But you, this is this other stuff is there's no other way to say it except if it's it's unacceptable and there's just there's no way to defend if those if these allegations are true and I have to believe that a, a vast majority of them are otherwise the region the board of regents wouldn't have made the decision they made today and the words they used in their statement appalled and shocked at the depth of these allegations horrific I believe was another word used so. I don't think it's going to get any better anytime soon. Well, Trey, thanks for coming on, spending your day off, calling into the show and trying to set the Chris Command Center straight. I appreciate it, bud. And um, and I, I look forward to seeing your tweets at uh, 656 Pacific on Sunday. You got night. it. Hey, Chris, there's a little mute button right there for you, brother. Both of you. <laughs> I love you too much, Trey, to do that. Yeah, we You're can't do best. that to Never you. change. Yeah, <laughs> never change. Thanks, Trey. Thanks. You got it, guys. That's uh, Trey Wingo. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.